Greetings, and welcome to another installment of Saratoga in Shutdown, a series produced by the Spa City Review to discuss the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the Saratoga community. If you'd like to contact us, you can reach us at news at spacityreview.com. Like so many members of the Saratoga community, our local musicians have found themselves cut off from their usual sources of recreation and income. In this episode of Saratoga in Shutdown, we are going to speak with two local artists who have endeavored to continue Saratoga's open mic nights through live streaming. Tonight, we are joined by Rick Bolton and Jackie Dugas, the hosts of Quarantine Open Mic. I'm Peter Burley, and with me as always is Spa City Review contributor, Megan Zahn. Rick, Jackie, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks. thanks for having us. Thank you, Peter. We're excited. So, Jackie, can you can you tell us how this open this quarantine open mic night came to be? Sure. Yeah. You know, I just I personally had been missing it a lot. Um, you know, in Saratoga, we'll normally have between three and four open mics a week that a lot of the same people go to. Um, and so I was missing that community and I kind of had a feeling a lot of people felt the same way. And, uh, and so I, to be quite honest, I had seen that there was, there's another county, I think it's, it's, there's a, I'm not sure what it's called, but there's another open mic out of Pennsylvania that's been incredibly successful. And it's, and so uh, I kind of looked into it a little bit further and realized that this was possible possible and thought that a lot of people would probably be on board too. Um, and so I posed the idea to Rick and he's, you know, the, <clears throat> the quote unquote prince of Saratoga, the open mic king. <laughs> wow. Oh, no, I'm finding this out now. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I, you know, I thought it'd be a great idea for him to host it as he normally does in Saratoga. Um, and so, yeah, that's really how it came about. I, we created the, the Facebook page. Um, we thought it'd be a good idea to have two a night or two a week, that is. Um, and so, yeah, it just sort of took off from there. Then Rick took it into his hands and has been doing a great job posting it. So it goes uh, two nights a week. That's um, Sunday and Tuesday? Yep, yeah, it uh, previously had been Tuesday and Wednesday. Now we've switched over to Sundays and Tuesdays. Yes. And, and Rick, you do Tuesday nights. You host on Tuesday nights? I do. What what is involved in in setting up uh setting up the open mic? How does somebody participate? Well, what they uh do is get in touch with me. Uh I've been doing a list. It's it's uh, we do everything through bar people. God bless John Griffith. He's uh, yes. allowed mm -hmm. us access to uh to bar people, which has quite a few members. So we get a uh, uh you know a nice viewing audience or we have access to a great viewing audience. And what they do is get in touch with me. I make a list, uh, put it together as I would uh if we were doing this uh live uh that i used to do on tuesday nights at gaffney's or any other open mic that i've ever done and then once i've got the list i put it up let everybody know uh their time and and um, uh, we go from there i start the night off with 15 minutes it's a three song 15 minutes was just typical in the uh the open mic format and uh you know it's the next best uh, thing to be in there do you, uh, mm. do you, so do you uh, recommend somebody make contact with bar, ten, uh, bar people through Facebook or their webpage? I would say uh, the easiest thing is, is uh, Facebook. <clears throat> and you've got to be a member of bar people uh, to do this. Um, but that's a real, real easy uh, thing to do. You can join. Uh, John Griffith uh, says, yeah, we'd love to have you, uh, you know, join bar people. Uh, you're in, and, um, uh, and then I, I can attest to, to that. It is easy to join. They let me in. They even let me yeah. in. Yeah, they let me <laughs> that in. That says something. That's surprise. very telling. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> come on, come on. Yep. Now, <laughs> we we all know that um, nothing compares to actually uh, performing live in front of, in front of an audience downtown. Mm -hmm. However, uh, are there any benefits uh, that you've discovered to uh, going over? remotely playing remotely no pants <laughs> wow <laughs> there you go yeah that was quick. It's really i that mean you can weird. you can do it barefoot you can you know there's none of that annoying small talent that you have to deal with but no actually i miss that so much that element of it 
Um, <clears throat> I would say for people who tend to be a little stage fright when there is an audience, I think it might be easier. Um, <clears throat> you know, you don't have to worry about what actually seeing everyone's reaction. There's this, there's this device that's between you and everyone. Um, so I think that's what I found might be a little um, easier for some people. But what, what do you think, Rick? What, what do you um, find to me? Well, I mean, some of the benefits logistically for me is I don't have to set any equipment up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my, that's right. Yeah. You know, I don't have to drive down to the gig, back from the gig. Um, I can sit here all night and, and where I would go to a table or I would go to, uh, you know, the next artist that was up and let them know that I get to sit here in a chair with a glass of wine and I right. just, uh, yeah. you know, say something on my phone. You're up next. This is their last song. And uh, so logistically, it's it's uh, it's a whole lot easier, uh, you know, that way. Uh, but it is a different beast. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's it's tough for those people that are doing um, oh, a comedic song or something with some humor. Yeah, yeah. just waiting for that uh, reaction, yes. you know. <laughs> and you know, you're hoping you know somebody gets it out there. You know? uh, so you know, there are parts of it that that are. Um, that are a little bit tougher, you know, it's all about instant gratification for we musicians, you know, yeah. and, and that isn't there, you know. Um, so, I mean, uh, you know, there, there's good and bad with, uh, with, uh, with the, uh, the live stream. You know, when I was uh, watching the other night, can you, are you watching your screen to see the comments and the, the thumbs ups? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the equivalent of applause, I suppose. That that kind of is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah. it right there. You know, when you see a bunch of hearts and a bunch <clears throat> of, you know, thumbs up, you know, either your family's watching or you're actually doing something right, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. But I'll tell you, you know, Peter, this uh, the community is so supportive that a lot of the people watching are those people that have come to the open mics and mm -hmm. they are the most supportive uh, group, uh, you know, as Saratoga musicians and uh, are, I mean, it's just everybody is so super supportive of one another. And it, you know, boils down to, you know, back in the day when we could actually do this live, uh, you know, somebody that had been attending open mics and whatnot would actually get a gig. You would see half to three quarters of the open mic people come to that very first gig and support the artist, which is so cool. And that's what happens yeah. with the, uh, the viral open mics. So how has this affected the two of you personally uh, on a personal level? Uh, well, I'd say for myself, it's been, you know, there've been good days and bad days. Um, as someone who's an extrovert, it's been honestly challenging, not going out, like seeing friends, seeing family every day. I haven't really seen my family at all. Um, just to be responsible and adhere to the social distancing rules. Um, and so in that regard, it's, it's been difficult. Um, and obviously there's way more time on your hands. So distracting yourself, you know, not finding yourself too idle or like binge watching a show, an entire show in one day has also not been easy. I've done that a few times, but I guess the good aspects of it is I have, um, found myself being a little bit more involved actually in some ways um, in the community. Um, I was working with the hospital for a little bit. Um, and, you know, I have reached out to friends and family who I haven't reached out to in a long time, you know, just checking in on them. And so it, it, in some ways it's created some more connection, even though you can't see the person, you're not physically with them. I have found that um, I am actually communicating maybe more with some people who I had kind of lost touch with. Um, and, you know, you do spend a lot more time creating music and getting to practice the craft and stuff. So it's, you just have to adapt, I guess. It's sort of the new norm for now, but it hasn't been all bad. It's sort of got to take it day by day, I suppose. That's true. What about you, Rick? Well, it, it is, it's, it's very tricky, you know, because none of us have ever done this before. I, I don't think, mm -hmm. uh, and, and none of us have had to deal with something like this, this uh, ever. So it's, uh, you know, for the musicians out there and for myself personally, it's really, really tough. You know, I've had like uh, a lot of time uh, connecting with people 
and to do it from an open mic in, in this kind of a medium is um, it's very different. Uh, you know, I will say there's a lot of stuff getting done around the house that you know I, I can <laughs> yeah. blow off. You know, uh, where you finally and, got and to that project that you've been and on. have blown off. I'm looking at a dresser that I've got up on a on a table and I'm fixing that, and oh. you know, it's all the other little things uh, around the yeah. house. I'm doing more reading than ever. And uh, Jackie's right. I mean, it does give you a chance to uh, do some writing, you know, which sometimes uh, doesn't happen. Uh, you get to practice uh, just a little bit more. And I'm taking up tuba again, you know, I mean, with oh, all boy. my spare time. Oh, wow. But, this is you news know, for me, too. <laughs> that's my, that was my first instrument. So, but, um, you know, it's very different, uh, you know, um, and, and, uh, I, I can't put it in a positive or a negative sense. It just, mm, it mm -hmm. just very, very, very different. You know, I wonder if there will be something like artist guilt coming out of this where uh, songwriters will regret not writing a large catalog of songs during this downtime. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, that makes, that doesn't make sense. You know, yeah. I, I have true, like, honestly have not been writing as much as you would think. Perhaps there's, there's a lack of inspiration. Usually I'm either like looking outside my window at the swirls below or I'm staring at the ceiling. So there like isn't enough for me. I personally haven't found a whole lot of experience to pull from. Um, but I think, I hope there isn't too much guilt because I think for it's all, we're all taking it individually and we're all dealing with different things and, as long as you you're, yourself are staying healthy and I don't know, just take from it what you will. I, I hope there isn't, but you, I have seen a lot of great music coming out of it too. Yeah. From other people, yeah. <laughs> other people. Um, yeah. yeah there'll be, know. there'll be a lot of great songs that come out of this, uh, you know, this, however long it takes, there'll be a lot, a lot of really, yeah. really cool songs. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. You know? Um, guilt affects songwriters, you know, uh, in a, a, a real deep way. So we'll get some. It's a real. Rich... <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> you know, guilt if is a positive. Some, if yeah. you can throw in, if you can throw in some heartbreak, you know, and uh, you know, a pickup truck, and you know, some alcohol, you know, which, <laughs> yes, which has been happening during this uh, this uh, pandemic. Uh, you know, there are going to be some great songs. <laughs> Without you know, it's awesome that you guys are doing this. I, I mean, I think music is such an important um, way for, for people to still feel kind of normal. So it, it's, it's very cool to have something like this that people can, you know, log on and, and, and listen and watch. It's awesome. Well, I think Jackie will say the same thing as me. We're, we're, it's, it's kind of for ourselves, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I feel guilty, you know. We just, we just got to keep moving. We just got to keep uh, doing stuff, you know. And uh, um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's as much about us, you know, feeling good, trying to get that out there as it is mm -hmm. people, I think, joining in and, and uh, um, you know, uh, uh, doing the open mics. So quarantine open mic, uh, Sundays and Tuesdays. Uh, now, where do we find that again? Good. You'll find uh, the open mic itself on Bar People, and if you want more information in, in regards to, um, you know, how, how we set it up, uh, how, how long you get, it's, it's all on the Saratoga Quarantine Open Mic Facebook page. Jackie and Rick, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it, and we will see you on Sunday and Tuesday. Uh, what time? 6.30 on Sunday and 6 on Tuesday. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Megan. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Megan. Thank you fun. both.